born in Nourishell, New York. When I was about four years old, my parents moved to uh, West Arlington, Vermont. Then I went to college at Haverford College outside of Philadelphia and was an English major. And I had no interest in being an artist until really by accident I took a sculpture course in my junior year and I just fell in love with sculpture. Originally, I think what drew me to sculpture was working with materials, working with clay, working with plaster, working with stone, and uh, the combination of that and the three-dimensionality of it. My father grumped and groaned for two or three years after I told him I wanted to be a sculptor. He said being a painter like my oldest brother Jarvis was, was not very economic. Being a poet like my middle brother Tom was, was less economic, but he said the worst thing he could think of for making a living that there was, was being a sculptor. And um, I've proven him wrong. So I went to the Pennsylvania Academy of Fine Arts for three years and studied sculpture there. And then I won a traveling fellowship, which was supposed to be for three months. So we took a Yugoslav freighter, which was the cheapest way to travel across the Atlantic at that point, took two weeks from New York to Genoa, and then went to Rome thinking we'd stay for six months because we'd saved up some money for this. I, I loved it there for the art that was there that I could see. Rome in the 60s was a wonderful place for sculptors to be because bronze foundries were very, very cheap compared with what bronze foundries were over here. And I trained in marble carving in Carrara every summer. Our six months in Italy has now extended to 46 years and doesn't seem to be over yet. Well, I work essentially in three different materials. I work in wax for bronze or resin casting, in stone as carving, and I work in clay, usually for terracotta, but once in a while for casting in resin. The way I do stone carving is often that I will see a piece of stone and I'll think, well, I think I'll carve that off and I see where that leads me, and it leads me slowly into the carving itself. And each stone you carve is different, and so you may carve it slightly differently. It's not so much the challenge of the material as it is the challenge of being able to um, project the material into space in some way that, that, that I enjoy. People looking at my work often say it's influenced by pre-Columbian art, but it isn't particularly. I, it's only very recently that I've started seeing much of pre-Columbian art. I think the strongest influence on me was Donatello, the 15th century Florentine sculptor, although Rodin was also a fairly strong influence on me while I was in art school. Later on in Rome, Bernini became an important influence. When I would have trouble with a marble carving, I would go over to the Borghese Gallery and, and stand in front of a Bernini and say, John Lorenzo, I'm having trouble with this carving. Can you suggest what I should do with it? And he would usually give me a nice answer. I'm very much influenced by medieval, especially French medieval gargoyles and things like that. I was commissioned in the early 70s to design 11 gargoyles for the National Cathedral in Washington, although I did monsters even before that. Monsters seems to me a wonderful way of combining the abstract with the realistic in a funny way because a monster can have two noses and three mouths and yet you still see what it is. Whereas a pure abstraction, uh, you have to enjoy just for the quality of the form. I think the biggest single carving I've ever done is a cross with eight seams from the life of the Virgin on it that is four meters 25 high, which makes it about 14 feet high. Working on that, I could not resist putting a monster face at the bottom. I did it for a uh, hotel run by nuns for retreats. And while I was working on finishing it, there was a retreat there, and the priest who was leading the retreat came out 
And he looked at it, and then he looked at the monster face, and he said, what does that mean? And I thought for a minute, and then I said, well, that's nature, and nature is neither good nor evil. And he thought for a minute, and then he said, St. Augustine, City of God, chapter 15, verses 3 and 4, you have perfectly illustrated what St. Augustine says about nature. <laughs> that was one of the funnier. Well, <laughs> I have always been fascinated by circuses. My parents used to take us in the 40s down to New York City to see Barnum and Bailey Ringling Brothers. They may have gone down to New York City for another reason, but as far as I was concerned, the reason was to see Ringling Brothers Circus. And I've always loved circuses. And Rome, every year, Rome for about eight weeks around Christmas time has two or sometimes three circuses. So I used to go to the circus all the time, and I'd go to the circus and sketch, and. Um, started doing acrobats and still do do forms of acrobats. I just enjoy it. It's, it's like I love mermaids. I mean, or, well, I should really say merpersons because I sometimes do mermen and sometimes mermoms and sometimes mermaids. <laughs> and, uh, and then I also work abstract and I work abstract in marble particularly because there's something about the quality of the material that I want to bring out that wouldn't come out if it were too realistic. And I like the varied textures you get in marble with using different tools. I mean, what the point chisel does, what the tooth chisel does, what the flat chisel does, what polish does. I like to combine these in one carving. I've always found uh, the way Baroque sculpture projects things out into space and things uh, is as a challenge. So I like, I like carving in such a way that, it, that it's a challenge to me to be able to carve it so thin and so delicate. And I just enjoy carving. I've been a long way. I've done a lot of things. I've done a, a lot of sculpture and a lot of traveling. And uh, I look forward to being able to continue to do the things that I've been doing and uh, enjoy doing them.